new investors. So Ponzi scheme organizers often solicit new investors by promising to invest funds and opportunities claiming to generate high returns with little or no risk. In many Ponzi schemes, the fraudsters focus on attracting new money to make promised invest payments to earlier stage investors to create the false appearance that investors may be profiting from the legitimate business. Why do Ponzi schemes collapse? With little or no legitimate earnings, Ponzi schemes require a consistent flow of money from new investors to continue. Ponzi schemes tend to collapse when it becomes difficult to recruit new investors or when a large number of investors seek ask to cash, up, cash out. We'll take it over one. So how did Ponzi schemes get their name? So the schemes are named after Charles Ponzi, who duped thousands of New England residents into investing in a postage stamp speculation scheme back in the 1920s. At a time when the annual interest rate for bank accounts was 5%, Ponzi promised investors that he could provide a 50% return in just 90 days. Ponzi initially bought a small number of international mail coupons in support of his scheme, but quickly to using incoming funds from new investors to pay purported returns to early investors. So what are some Ponzi scheme red flags? So many Ponzi schemes share common characteristics. Look for these warning signs. If they say it's a high, there's high investment returns with little or no risk, unregistered investments, unlicensed sellers, secretive and or complex strategies, and difficulty re receiving payments, those are signs of a Ponzi scheme. So look out for those warning signs. Uh, I put this in the chat and also this Prezi is located on part two, just in case uh, you want to, uh, so that you'll learn more about it. Just look out for those warning signs just to prevent getting into a Ponzi scheme. There's so many of them out there and you will probably get offered one eventually. So just avoid it at all costs. big companies can still be Ponzi schemes. Uh, Minji, um, thanks for bringing it up, Minji. Uh, big companies could be Ponzi schemes still. I'll show you an example after this presentation of Bernie Madoff, who was the biggest Ponzi scheme in history, and he he stole $60 billion in total. So even if they're a big organization, they could still be a Ponzi scheme. So I'll show you a video on that after this. So what steps can I take to avoid Ponzi schemes and other investments frauds? So there are some basic questions you should always ask before you commit your hard-earned money to investment. When you consider your next investment opportunity, start with five questions. Is the seller licensed? Is the investment registered? How do the risks compare with potential rewards? Do I understand the investment? And where can I turn to help for help? So ask those questions. Also contact the Ontario Securities Commission if you have questions and are worried about something being a Ponzi scheme. And then what are some of the similarities and differences between Ponzi and pyramid schemes? So pyramid scheme is a typical hook. So pyramid scheme, earn high profits by making one payment and finding others to become distributors of a product. The scheme typically does not involve a genuine product. The purported product may not exist or may be sold only to other people who also become distributors. So how the pyramid scheme works is that the if you join one, the they make all, all their money on recruitment. So they have to recruit new people to make money. And that's the only way they make money. They may have some sort of product that they're selling to say that that's how they make money but it turns out that the sales of the product are so so low because no one the product is not very high quality uh, that they don't make any money in selling the product the only way they make money is through recruitment so that's what happens and uh the you're spending all these fees on on being with the organization while you're making no sales so that's what happens with a pyramid scheme yeah, so I guarantee you that each of you will all be offered a pyramid scheme. Uh, I have many times. People have come up to me offering to join a pyramid scheme, and I've said no. So I recommend for you to not 
join one in the future. So yeah, Minji says I almost joined that before. Yeah, just don't join it at all. We're gonna do a full today. We'll do a full breakdown of pyramid schemes. And then Brooke says my parents got suckered into Amway in the in the nineties. Yes, so Amway works that way. So they they have like Brooke. I'll ask Brooke. I'm familiar with Amway too. I've they've offered me several times, but. Uh, can if you want to talk about Amway, you can, or or if you are uncomfortable, uh, you don't have to. And also WFG, yeah, WFG is another one too. World Financial Group, they have been. So they 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 go around and they try to recruit people. They do they sell insurance products, but the problem is the pro the sales of the insurance products is so low because no one really not a lot of people want them. Some like not a lot of people want them. So the main way they make it is through recruitment. So if you're not recruiting members, you're not making money really. So that's why they they recruit all the time. So Simran says, my friend tried recruiting me into it and she's still in there. She quit her full-time accounting job for it. So that's, she, she may be, she might be successful with it because she's recruiting so many people. If that, that's really, that's the only way they make money with it is through recruitment because the product that they're selling is not valuable. Even though they might say it's valuable, it's just not valuable. The product is not very high quality usually and selling it is virtually impossible so the only way you make it is through recruiting yeah 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 so brooke brings up a good point you you can ask them to track their expenses so they can see what they're pull, actually pulling in that's that's a good point because it costs a lot the fees that they they charge are just off the charts yeah so yeah avoid so avoid amway avoid wfg uh yeah avoid yeah avoid amway avoid wfg avoid any any organization that focuses on recruitment as sales revenue Yeah, Brooks right about that. Amway is really bad, especially for parents and folks that are are religious. So, yes, they there's this video. It's a bit too long for the course, but it goes through. I'll I'll, I'll send it to everyone here. It's about it's oh, more than an hour. It goes through what appear like what Amway is, what pyramid schemes are, what multi level marketing is, um, and. Yeah, so it's a it's a great interview. It's with this uh this YouTuber called Coffeezilla. Uh so Coffeezilla MLM. He goes through the problems with multi-level marketing. So Brooke follows Coffeezilla. I recommend following Coffeezilla. He's I watch his stuff a lot a lot more now. And he goes through scams, Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, and uh it's a very good investment uh investment he goes through a lot of the risks with investing so i'll post the link in the chat after we're done this presentation here and then ponzi scheme is earn high investment returns with little or no risk by simply handling handing over your money often the investment doesn't exist or only a small percentage of income 